So guys, in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking the five three-week-old newborn kittens and I'm gonna be taking them to surrender them to the Humane Society so I can foster them. We made it! This baby is full of worms. What up guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all are having an amazing day so far. So guys, in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking the five three-week-old newborn kittens and I'm gonna be taking them to surrender them to the Humane Society so I can foster them. So guys, just to tell you a little bit more about fostering an animal from a shelter, what you do is you go to your local shelter and you will sign up to become a foster parent. Now once you do that, you sign all the papers, you take any classes they require you to take, and then what the Humane Society will do is they will contact you when they receive an animal that is less than two pounds because they cannot spay or neuter it and it needs fostering, or it is less than eight weeks old, which again needs fostering. Now during that time when you are fostering either a puppy or a kitten, what you will do is the Humane Society will contact you when the little guy needs to be taken back to the shelter to get checked up by the vet, get any shots, get any wormings, get any medical treatment it needs to ensure its health and to ensure that it can be adopted properly. Now once that baby receives all of its shots, reaches two pounds, and is over eight weeks old, they will have you do is take it to have a final drop off where you say your last goodbyes to the baby that you have been fostering for a long time. And then what they will do is they will spay or neuter it and put that baby up for adoption. Now guys, there are all different types of fostering. You do not only have to foster puppies or kittens. What you can do is you can foster a mother dog or a mother cat that is expected to have a litter of puppies or kittens or you can also foster an elder cat or dog that has problems and that hasn't been adopted in a while. Now I highly highly recommend fostering guys. I have been doing it for five years well I mean over five years. It has absolutely changed my life. It has helped me grow with my animals, raise these little babies from when they were little to when they get adopted guys. It is a game changer guys. It is a lot of responsibility guys and when I was in high school I would get five hours a day for every animal I foster guys. I have over 3,000 community service hours that I have received from just fostering. Now guys, I highly recommend fostering not only to experience raising an animal, but guys, if the shelter does receive a newborn puppy or kitten that does need fostering, that cannot stay at the shelter, that needs 24-7 care, and the shelter does not find a foster parent within that day, well guys unfortunately they will put that puppy or kitten down so guys if you are interested go to your local shelter foster become a foster parent guys even if it means going through the ups and the downs believe it or not i have been there it can be tough at times but if you need any tips you can look at my previous videos or you can look up on the internet how to stimulate how to bottle feed how to keep a puppy or kitten warm guys i believe in you you guys can do it we made it! So guys, now that I finally made it to the Humane Society with the little babies that I put in this little cage right here, there is a process that I have to go through. Now because of COVID, no one is actually allowed into the shelter unless they have an appointment to go meet a new animal. So when surrendering foster animals just like this, what you have to do is you have to text a number and I have to text at shelter Hannah Fetter and what they do is they will come to my car, help me with whatever I need, bring me the papers I need to fill out for these babies, and then go take them to get their checkup. So guys, I already texted the number and it says I am number one in line. Now someone is gonna come and assist me and then they're gonna come and evaluate these babies, give them whatever they need, give them whatever medications necessary to keep these babies healthy. So guys, I just received this text right here and I opened it up and I had to complete an intake form. Now what that is, is whenever I surrender an animal or whenever anyone else surrenders an animal to the Humane Society, they have to complete an intake form of why they're surrendering the animal and what the reasons are and to agree to the terms of surrendering the animal. 
one eternity later. All right, guys, so I finally made it home after a long day with the five little kitties and taking them to the Humane Society. So right in front of me, I have some goodies that the Humane Society gave me. Now, whenever you foster, the Humane Society will provide all the things you need for whatever you're fostering. So they will actually give you food, milk, bowls, kitty litter, puppy pads, bedding, guys, you name it. Anything you need to ensure that these babies are happy and healthy, they will provide for you. So it doesn't have to come out of your own pocket. So guys, just to show you what I got. So right here in this little bag. Now this is just kitty litter. This is a ginormous bag of kitty litter, guys. You can see I improvised with this Walgreens bag because this is a uh, pretty heavy. So uh, the bag broke, so it's going to stay right here. I'm not going to touch it because I don't want it to break anymore. But to show you guys what's in this bag. So right here, the Humane Society gave me a bunch of blankets for these little babies. And they gave me bowls to feed them. They gave me a bunch of toys. And guys, if you look right here, you can see that they also gave me a pile of food. Now, since these babies are at the weaning stage, we are going to start giving them soft food and then gradually start introducing the dry food. Guys, I almost forgot the handy dandy little pooper scooper with the litter boxes that they also gave me as well, guys. Guys, if you cannot foster because of your work schedule or your school schedule, guys, do not feel bad. But what you can do to help is you can donate stuff. So you can donate stuff like this pooper scooper. You can donate bowls bedding, milk, food, guys, you name it. Anything helps since the Humane Society or all Humane Societies are nonprofit organizations. So guys, I wanted to show you right here what paperwork you will be receiving when you decide to foster and if you decide to foster. So guys, right here, even though I have been fostering for over five years, this is protocol. They have to give you this to make sure that the papers you have are up to date. Now right here, is emergency symptoms that I see in the kitten or puppy that does not seem right. And then they have emergency veterinary clinics that are open 24 seven in case I have an emergency. This is also a kitten care packet. And if you foster a puppy, you will get a puppy care packet. And it basically just tells you what to do, how to protect the puppy, and just basic guidelines of how to make him safe. Now right here, this is the treatment of what these cats are getting now right here guys this is absolutely adorable guys now i know you guys wanted to name them but the humane society named them cobweb hocus trick treat and pocus now guys since the humane society has picked those names today for the five little cute kitties those are going to be the names that are displayed on their card when people are looking to adopt. Now, I think it's absolutely adorable since Halloween is right around the corner, guys. I want you to stop what you're doing and comment down below what you think of these adorable names. So guys, I'm going to take the two bags full of little kitty stuff and I'm going to go set up their room. So guys, I'm going to open up the door to the little kitty room and there is going to be a kitty stampede. Hi, you guys are so tiny. What are you doing over there? So guys, you can see that I switched their room to a more smaller area, which is a lot better to clean and maintain. You guys can see that I added the kitty litter right here because since they are starting to go to the bathroom on their own, you can see that I had puppy pads before, but they are just absolutely learning how to use the kitty litter. I mean, guy, what are you doing? That's not, that's not a play toy. All right, guys, so now that I'm in here with these little babies, you can see that they are absolutely starving and they need their next feeding. Now, since I have the soft kitten food from the Humane Society, we are going to feed them the soft food for the first time. Now, they might not get it entirely since they have been bottle fed for their entire life so far. So I'm just going to put a little can in here and let you get a whiff. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to put one can. Split it up a little bit. And since there's five, I'm gonna do two cans. Okay, let's see their reaction. Come on, guys. Look, they're interested, guys. Let's see if they know how to eat this. Oh my goodness, that is so yummy. Look, buddy, over here. 
So guys, they are totally getting the hang of it. They are just chomping down the food, guys. If you see, they are just going at it. Just, this one, this one's literally in the entire bowl. What are you doing, buddy? Now that these little babies have finished eating their dinner, you can see that their tummies are just absolutely so full. I mean, you can just see that they're getting all snuggled up and ready for bed. Now, the last thing I need to do is the Humane Society gave me two medications. Now, this one is dewormer because you can just tell, if you look at this baby's stomach, not only the food, but this baby is full of worms. So they need to be treated once a day for three days. Now this medication right here, now this is for wing worm. Now what I thought was mange is actually a lesion and is actually ringworm. Now if I show you guys right here, they cleaned its little ringworm right here so the medication can go on easily and heal, heal properly. Now if you come look over here, you can see that this baby has it on her face right here. Poor thing. Oh my goodness, are you crying? And this little baby, now I thought this one didn't have anything or any ringworm. Look guys, right here, this little poor baby has ringworm. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna treat them for the ringworm. So if you look right here, the Humane Society gave me my Conazole lotion to treat their ringworm. So I'm just gonna open this up and it's a liquid, so I just put it on their skin. And I have no idea, but this is not working, and uh, so... <laughs> Right here, I have the kitty that has the ringworm on the face right here. Now it says avoid the eyes, ears, and mouth. So I'm going to flip this little baby on her back like this. And if you see, she is becoming very limp because she feels as if the mom is carrying her. Now this is not hurting her. I'm just merely picking her up and placing her just like this. Putting a little bit on, a couple drops. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. Oh, no. It's probably very, very strong and she can, you know, feel that you know, right next to her eye. So we're just gonna put that just like that. And there you go. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna apply this to all the kittens. So I'll get back to you once I do that. All right guys, now that I applied the ringworm medicine to all five little kitties, their tummies are full and they are so sleepy and tired and they are just ready for bed. So guys, that is gonna conclude today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a big thumbs up and stop what you're doing and comment down below, guys, if you would foster an animal like I am doing here. And guys, if you wanna see these little babies grow up to be happy and healthy kitties, then subscribe to the first link down below.